A major announcement by North Korea leader Kim Jong-un has said his country will suspend all nuclear long-range missile tests and shut down a nuclear test site. The announcement coming weeks before a planned summit between Kim and President Trump. And President Trump reacting to the announcement just moments ago, tweeting out, quote, North Korea has agreed to suspend all nuclear tests and close up a major test site. This is very good news for North Korea and the world. Big progress. Look forward to our summit. Joining me now is John Hanna, senior counselor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and former national security advisor to Vice President Cheney. Also, Asia expert Gordon Chang, author of Nuclear Showdown. Good to see you, gentlemen. John, first to you. Hi, David. We have this breaking news, which is extraordinary. I want to talk a little bit about that with John, with uh, Gordon. But we also have Mike Pompeo just laying the found work for an extraordinary meeting, a really an unprecedented meeting. We have not had a meeting president to a North Korean leader ever since since the Korean War, as far as I know. Uh, it's it's just extraordinary that that is more than what any Secretary of State has done, particularly thinking of John Kerry or Hillary Clinton, and yet they were confirmed, and it's possible Mike Pompeo will not be confirmed. How is that possible? Yeah, now this is a real scandal, I would say, David, uh, and it's a real blemish, I think, on a long and storied history of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The only thing that should matter is the fact that Mike Pompeo, by every relevant criteria, is fully qualified for this job by knowledge, by experience, by personal integrity, and by the fact that he is, is the choice of the person that the American people duly elected as president of the United States. How in the world do you think John Kerry or Hillary Clinton or Madeleine Albright got the overwhelming support of, uh, of Senate Republicans? It wasn't because they agreed with their approaches to Iran or North Korea or climate change. It's because they understood what the relevant standard was. And the fact that, that we've got a bunch of Democrats now who are going to uh, abuse their constitutional prerogative of advice and consent and base their choice on politics, yeah. on tribalism. The fact they don't just don't like President Trump, I think, is a real shame, particularly at a time when we we have a, a Secretary of State who's going to need all the bipartisan support he he can get to deal with the very difficult challenges we confront. But, and Gordon, just just to put those three people that John mentioned: uh, Madeleine Albright, John Kerry, and of course Hillary Clinton, Secretaries of State who came nowhere near what has been done already in dealing with North Korea. Talk about that, but also the significance of what, of what North Korea announced tonight. Yeah, this is important. I mean, we haven't seen anything like this. Of course, Kim could be playing us, and, and we've seen this before. 2008, they detonate the cooling tower at Yongbin, their nuclear facility. And then the year after that, they walk away from the six-party talks. But I think that this time, even if Kim is doing this as a negotiating tactic, He's got a problem because you've got now so many dramatic developments, one right after the other. He's going to be swept away by events. This is how history occurs. So he's, he's caught up, Gordon, in a spiral. That is, he's committed to too much to walk away from right now. Right. And also you have other people playing their cards as well. Moon Jae-in, the South Korean president, as well as President Trump. So Kim, although he may have this gamed out, you know, they always say they game out all of these five steps in advance. The problem is, at this point, I don't think he can do it. There's just too much occurring. Well, John, before we completely dismiss the possibility that he is confirmed by the Senate, I, there, there is at least one Democratic senator, a woman who came out today and said, uh, she would vote for him. Of course, Rand Paul's a Republican who says he probably won't. Uh, but doesn't it look bad in light of all of these developments? Won't it eventually make the Democrats look bad if they reject? And won't they be shamed into accepting his, his confirmation? Oh, I think yeah, that by the time it gets to the full floor uh, that Mike Pompeo is going to get by, but he's just going to squeeze by with just enough votes. And again, we're facing so many really difficult, complex national security challenges yeah. right now, David, that you really need a fully empowered secretary well, of state. Well, and particularly who's... somebody who has already set the stage, if you will, for a lot of these things. And talk, if you can, John, for a moment about the fallout from last week's Syrian raid. 
Yeah, no, I supported the raid. I think it was important for the president to enforce his red line against chemical weapons. But the fact is that none of the major strategic challenges we face in Syria has gone away. In fact, they're only getting worse. Yeah. In particular, this Iranian drive for hegemony across Syria to the Mediterranean, right to Israel's border. We're setting ourselves up for a regional conflagration uh, that's going to engulf the Middle East, perhaps. And the United States needs a strategy to deter and thwart that. Well, Gordon, the one thing that I think it's it's fair to say is that is that Kim Jong Un was watching very carefully what the United States was doing in Syria, and perhaps, and you're the expert, perhaps that had something to do with today's announcement. Well, I certainly think so, because what President Trump did in the Syrian raid was said, thou shall not use chemical weapons. Well, we got to remember that Kim last year used chemical weapons on his half-brother. Also, the other connection here is that North Korea is the primary supplier to Syria of chemical weapons. They've had this chemical weapons relationship since the mid-1990s. There are at least two Syrian chemical facilities that the North Koreans built. North Koreans have been killed in Syria in connection with chemical weapons events. Kim certainly, I think, was unnerved by what happened last week. An access of evil is the phrase we used to use. Gordon Chang, John Hanna, good to see you both. Thank you very much.